What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. FantasyTeamAdvisors.com bringing home the bacon MLB DFS video. Unfortunately, it's Monday. It's June 19th, but we are back with another video. If this is the first time you've been here, welcome. If this is not the first time you've been here, welcome back. You know what we're going to do. We're going to break the slate down. We don't have all the pitchers on the slate, but what we're going to do is we're going to go through all of the pitchers that are currently available. We're going to look at the bats that we like and hopefully make you a better DFS player. If you need that little bit of boost and this is it, that's awesome. If you need a little bit bigger boost than that, go check out FantasyTeamAdvisors.com. That's FantasyTeamAdvisors.com. Hit the FTA Plus tab for $10 a month. You can get a ton of MLB DFS, DFS information for a month. If you want to check it out, this is the last month we're doing for $10. Then we're going to go up to $25, and that'll include throwing NFL content starting about the All-Star break. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, instead of having a $10 a month and then a separate one for sports betting, it'll be all-encompassing for $25 a month. So pretty excited about it. Anyone who signs up will get in for $10 now, and then next month will be $25. So hopefully... You guys find this information at least a little bit helpful, or you learn something, which we know you have. So, just want to thanks thank everybody that has made this channel what it is and grown it as much as it has in the past basically month and a half. Pretty big stuff there. So, as you know, if any video gets at least 50 likes and you leave a comment and you are a subscriber to the YouTube page, your name's going to get thrown into random.org. You're going to win a free week if your name is picked. If we get 100 likes on the video, you'll win a free month. And if this video gets 125 likes, you'll get a free season pass. Another way to get a season pass or a lifetime pass. Once this channel hits 10,000 subs, if we can get there before the start of the NFL season, you will randomly be chosen one subscriber to get a lifetime pass. And same thing with our Twitter page at advisors underscore team. So. Without further ado, we're going to randomize this three times, and the winner, so this will be from Saturday's video, because we didn't have a Sunday video, because I was out of town, this will be from Saturday's video, randomize this three times, and on the third time, that'll be the winner of the free week, so congratulations to Boy Sully, congratulations, like this comment, or this video, and hit us up on Twitter at advisors underscore team. Or you can email us dfshelp1 at gmail.com. And we will get you set up that way. So like I said, don't have all of the pitchers on the slate. But we are going to break it down. It is a 10 game slate. Uh, not the best pitching available currently what we've got. But we'll make do. Um, not every day is a good DFS day with pitching. But uh, we still have lineups to make. There's still money to be made. And hopefully you guys are there for the ride as well. So... First game on the slate, for whatever reason, we got a couple of three early games. Technically, the main slate's probably seven games. Um, it's not the best slate, like I said, but yeah, we'll look at it. I don't know why this is so early, uh, but yeah. So we got Jack Flaherty uh, versus the Nationals against we don't know who right now. Might They might be calling someone up, or there might be a pull bin game, so we kind of got to wait. But looking at Flaherty against the Nats... 56 plate appearances, a 304 batting average. So right off the bat, it's like, you know, not good to look at these numbers. And only 17.9K percentage. But what I want to do is dig into the numbers just a little bit and see what's going on. So sometimes it's a couple players that bump up the average and then the, the rest of the numbers are pretty good. Like Corey Dickerson has 19 plate appearances himself, uh, 4 for 16 with a double. Not much. Uh, Robles, two for seven. You got Candelario, two for four with a home run. Um, then everyone else has, you know, a couple hits. Lane Thomas has a double. Lane Thomas is one of those sneaky plays that he seems like he's getting extra base hits or home runs all the time. So I'm not against him. Um, probably would lean towards Flaherty a little bit, more of tournaments. I think for me, this day, um, unless other pitchers jump out, later on which we will cover in our cheat sheet and we will cover in um the other th on the vegas odds and stuff like that when those become available it's feeling like a, a tournament only day for me um so if i'm not taking flaherty against the nats i'm looking at candelario would be a, a good option 
Joey Manessis is a cheaper option. Lane Thomas is in the box score all the time. I'd be looking at kind of some of these, just again, depending on what lineup comes out there. And then depending on what, you know, who comes out for um, the Nats, that would help with the Cardinals bat. So Tommy Edmond, um, obviously Goldie, Arenado, Wilson Contreras had Sunday off. Like I said in the past, Sundays are the day that most catchers will have off. So Contreras should be in there. Um, should be good to go. It's kind of looking at that. You've got Paul DeYoung is in there as well. So again, it will depend on we'll have the BVP numbers out. Then we'll have uh, the lineups that come out, Vegas odds. That'll help us out a little bit. I think people might be scared away from Flaherty because... He gave up six runs on 10 hits and three walks over 4.1 innings and only striking out three players against San Francisco, his last start. So that might be something that deters people. So that's why he's, you know, a GPP option for me because I think he'll be lower owned on the slate. Next game, the Royals at the Tigers. You got Jordan Lyles versus Reese Olsen. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, we've taken a pitcher against the Tigers the last few games and they've given up five, six runs. Uh, it, it's unbelievable. Uh, you got Lyles, 50 plate appearances, 240 batting average, 20K percentage against the Tigers. But they've been hitting. They've been putting up runs. Just kind of looking at what they put up this weekend. And I believe we targeted a pitcher against them every game this weekend. Let's see. Trying to find it. Yeah, they put up six runs uh, on Sunday against the Twins. No runs on Saturday, 2 nothing. Seven runs. Joe, Joe Ryan, obviously, a couple of days ago, uh, Friday, Joe Ryan was our pitcher uh, of the video and the article. And I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, other DFS providers, or whatever you want to call them, will uh, not, like, say they're wrong. They'll build your lineups, they'll sell your lineups, and that's it. They don't go in-depth like we do in these videos. They don't build stuff out. They don't give you the information. They'll do that, and then sometimes they'll even, like, turn off the... Like, if someone came in and said, you suggested Joe Ryan, you're trash, blah, 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 and I was, like, just a lineup seller, then, yeah, I, people, they do that, and then they block the comments, or they turn comments off, or they block people. I'm going to let you know right now. Joe Ryan was in a fantastic matchup against Detroit. Shit the bed. No, no, nothing against it. So it's like it's crazy to think about, but <laughs> I'll have some exposure to Reese Olsen, and let's see what Tigers bats have had success. Javi's one for nineteen with a triple. Miggy, I I don't see how I would ever use Miggy in DFS um, at all. Jonathan Scope, same thing, two for seven. Torkelson, two for six. I would use him. Um, there's just there's not a lot to like about Detroit. It just depends on what player is going to come out and give you those points fantasy points and I until we get the Vegas numbers until we get the weather report until we get the BVP and stuff like that I don't like any of the Tigers bats this is a game that I'm probably be avoiding bats wise I would look at Reese Olsen um, for tournaments again I feel like this is more of a tournament day you might have a different strategy that's kind of my thought there um, I'll have some exposure to Reese Olsen against Kansas City I don't. I won't have any exposure to Jordan Lyles because the Tigers are just. They're when they when they put up runs when they don't get goose egg they put up six seven runs, and uh, that spells trouble for this. Luckily, with on Friday with Joe Ryan, and on Saturday with uh, off the top of my head I can't think of who we did. We we had a stud against a team that got lit up, but I we still cashed. Like, I only got like seven or eight points out of the pitcher, but like every single bat hit home runs. Kind of the same thing on Sunday. Um, our optimal lineups on the website hit over 200. The, the main, the main like winning lineups were like 291, which is an astronomical number for DFS. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of my thought in this game. Uh, Reese Olsen, um, and then no bats at the moment until I see other numbers. Blue Jays at the Marlins is next Jose Barrios versus Brian Hoeing. Um, Jose Barrios, 61 plate appearances against the Marlins, 204 batting average, only 11.5K percentage, which is low, which I don't really like. But the good thing is Barrios has really turned it around lately. Um, he's coming off of a fantastic... Now, he's coming off of his last start. 
I was kind of we. I have him on my season long team, and I was kind of weary. It's like why I I feel bad because he's a good pitcher and he's been trash basically the past couple of years. He had a matchup against the Orioles that they've been hitting the ball well, but I still took him. We still took him in our GPP lineups. He went seven point two innings. Only given up three hits, had a no hitter going into the seventh inning. Struck out five in that game. He's really turned it on lately. I like him in this matchup. The Marlins are very streaky. They're they're either putting up a ton of runs, hitting a ton of home runs, or they're getting shut out. The pitcher, the opposing pitcher, is doing really really well against them. And I feel like that might be what we could see in this one. I love Barrios here. Probably the reason why he's in the picture of this video and the article that we have. Um, and that's my thought in this. No Marlins bats jump out at me at this, at this moment. Um, we, If you don't want to uh, kind of go with Barrios, you know, Soler 5 for 21 with a double. Uh, Guriel 2 for 13 with a double. Arise. Arise is, you know, I think you're going to want to take him almost every single day. He's hitting almost 400 if he's not hitting 400 now. Um He's even hitting home runs. He doesn't hit very many. I think he's three or four on the year. He's getting singles. He's getting more on base. I think Friday night he went five for five and batting 390, had a home run there, RBIs, runs scored. So, I mean, doing a lot, and uh, I think we could feel confident in him if you aren't going Barrios, but I absolutely love Barrios in this game. Cubs of the Pirates is next. You got uh, Drew Smiley versus Osvaldo Beto. Uh, Smiley, 108 plate appearances against the Pirates, 320 batting number, 16.7K percentage. Bido, or Bido, uh, 17 plate appearances, 267 batting average. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, never heard of him before. I'm guessing he's a bullpen arm, and they are, or maybe not. Well, he did face the Cubs on June 14th, so his last start was against the Cubs. Four innings pitched, 13.5K per nine. Did get the loss, or that they ended up losing the game. 225 ERA, 1.75 whip. So he did walk a few, but to be honest with you, could be a tournament play. Going to be a very cheap tournament play. We'd obviously love to see more than four innings. Would love to see five, whatnot, um, five plus, maybe 5.2 to get a possible win. But if he's striking out a ton and he's a cheaper option, SP2 on DraftKings, I don't mind. Um, I'm not trusting Drew Smiley at all. Um, I would look at Beto or Bido in this one, and then I would look at some bats. So let's just look at the Pirates bats that have had success against Drew Smiley in the past. Santana's 8 for 23 with two doubles and two home runs. Brian Reynolds, 8 for 21 with a double and two home runs. Kutch is 5 for 18 with three home runs. Those three batters I like. Brian Hayes, 4 for 13 with two doubles. Connor Joe, 3 for 5 with two doubles. Um, Jack Sawinski, one for four, that one hit was a home run. Austin Hedges, one for three, that one hit was a home run as well. So it's kind of my thought there. Um, probably avoiding Drew Smiley altogether. Probably avoiding the Cubs bats. I would look at the Pirates bats we just talked about, and I would look at Esvaldo um, for a very cheap tournament option on this smaller seven-game main slate. Rockies at the Reds is next. You got Austin Gomber versus to be announced. Gomber, I thought Gomber was starting on Sunday. What happened? Did they move him back? No. Gomber was... Okay, so he wasn't starting. Uh, this will be his fifth day, um, so he's starting when he should. The problem is 27 plate appearance, 333 batting average. We just saw the Reds. I don't understand what's going on with the Reds. They keep putting up runs. They... Uh, they battled with the Reds all weekend. They dominated the Reds on uh, Saturday. What, like 10 to 3 or something? Um, and now the Reds get to play at home, which is Great American Small Park, which puts up a ton of runs, ton of home runs. And these bat these guys can hit. Let's look at the bats. Kevin Newman, 3 for 8. Jonathan India, 1 for 2. Luke Molly, 2 for 4 with a double and a home run. Um, Senzel's 1 for 3. Spencer Steers, 1 for 3 with a double. Uh, Jake Fraley, I think he had a home run on Sunday. I, I'm not going to lie. I really like a, a red stack. Just depending on what lineup comes out, a Jonathan India, possibly Kevin Newman, Ellie De La Cruz is there, Jake Fraley, TJ Friedel. 
uh, Nick Sinzel. Like, so I, I keep seeing these comments from you guys. Uh, I keep seeing the comments where you are like picking, and, and we've talked about this in previous videos, we're picking the right games and right stacks during the day, but they're the wrong bats in the stack. So this is where I say I really like a red stack but I'm gonna make multiple different red stacks. So depending on if you're on FanDuel or DraftKings, FanDuel, you do four batters for your main stack. Uh, DraftKings, you do five. I would do four of the reds, and then I'd make a, a secondary stack on a different lineup of four different reds, or mix and match the reds bats here. Um, I would look at a righty heavy, uh, depending on who's in there, against Gomber. Then you could do, you know, Ellie De La Cruz, which I believe he's strictly a lefty. Um, we could go through there. I mean, there's a lot to like about the Reds. They're hitting really well right now, putting up a ton of runs right now, and they're staying competitive against teams that are good, and the Rockies aren't good, so I think they could stay competitive. I, I'm not going to take – I don't know who the Reds pitcher is, but I'm not going to take a pitcher in this ballpark anyway, so it doesn't even matter. In this game, as of now, I'm not looking at any Rockies bats. I'm looking at strictly the Reds, and I'm looking at different – reds bats while building my lineups through there so that's my thought on this game again when we go through these weather is not a factor weather comes in later that will help shape the uh that'll help shape the the way we build our optimal lineups on the website um that a way we do our cheat sheet and stuff like that i'm just kind of checking the weather real quick see if there's anything that uh pops out at my head so let's see right now currently as of now the only weather is Kansas City Detroit and it's just wind speed of over 10 miles an hour um, <clears throat> that's the only thing that really is showing so uh, well actually no I'm, I'm seeing Colorado at Cincinnati for 40 percent chance of rain so let's let's kind of monitor this. See if it. Obviously, we know that by between now and when the game starts, weather will have changed. So uh, I do like this game. I would stack the Reds. Um, this is one to keep a, keep a little bit eye on the weather to see what's going on. The bats won't really be affected if it's just like a light rain and they play through it. The the pitching would be affected, but we're not going with pitching in this one. You got the Red Sox at the Twins. You got James Paxton versus Pablo Lopez. I believe didn't they just. Give me a second. Okay. I was like, didn't the Twins just place him on the IL, but they placed Jorge Lopez on the IL, not Pablo. So you got James Paxton versus Lopez. Paxton, he's done really well for us. Um, still can't believe he's not hurt yet, but we're going to ride this. We're going to ride the Paxton train until it derails whenever that may occur. He was supposed to pitch on Sunday Night Baseball against the Yankees, but with the rain out on Saturday, they moved it to Sunday. They changed pitching. They moved him to Minnesota. So looking at his game logs, I mean, <laughs> didn't give up a run against Colorado. His last start, six innings, 12K per nine, one quality start. Against the uh, Guardians, his, the start before that, seven innings, got the W, 2.57 ERA, 11.57K per nine. I mean, his K per nines this year um, – on the season, a 12.38 K per nine. He is striking out batters left and right. He has a fantastic chance, if he stays healthy in this game, to have another good game. We will dig into the numbers, but in this one, I'm looking at Paxton. Um, flip side, Pablo Lopez, only 18 plate appearances, so they haven't seen him much. 267 ERA. Um, Correa is 11 for 24, four doubles. That's a 458 batting average. Buxton, 3 for 8, 375. Gallo, 2 for 7. Gallo doesn't count. 286. So, I mean, the, the numbers are up there because that's a 458 and a 375 out of two batters. Other than that, I mean, three strikeouts. I mean, Correa struck out five times. Christian Vasquez struck out three. Buxton's four strikeouts. Joey Gallo's four strikeouts. I'm surprised he's not like 0 for 7 with seven strikeouts. Um, yeah, those numbers really don't scare me. I would take Paxton in this one. Um, flip side of that. Obviously, 18 plate appearances, probably a couple of batters, not much. Adam Duvall's 3 for 6 with a double. Justin Turner, 1 for 7 with a double. Reese McGuire, 0 for 2. So, yeah, there's not much going on. Kind of like, kind of see when we get some numbers through here, some Vegas and everything. But looking at that, I kind of like Paxton 
and some Red Sox bats, just depending on the lineup that comes out. So possibly a Verdugo, um, Adam Duvall if he's in there. I would like this game a little bit more if it were in Boston because Fenway gives up so many runs. Um, but I will look at some sort of uh, Paxton and mini Boston stack. I don't think I'd do a full stack, but there might be some players that I like. Possibly looking at uh, Verdugo, Justin Turner, and maybe Devers, just depending on what lineup comes out. Next game, the Mets at the Astros. You got Max Scherzer versus Hunter Brown. Scherzer, 58 plate appearances, 218 batting average. It's so crazy to see how how low he is. I mean, just looking at the <laughs> looking at the blurb on Yahoo Sports. Um, from his last start, Max Scherzer gets obliterated by the Yankees. Max Scherzer was obliterated in a no decision against the Yankees on Tuesday night, giving up six runs on seven hits and just three and one-third work. Um, I mean, 16.2 ERA in that start. Start before that against Atlanta, 7.94, but had 15.88 K per nine. Two starts in a row, Phillies and at Colorado, two really good starts above 10 K per nine. Both got the W there. Uh, but, I mean, he's been hit hard this year. It, I, I can't trust him. Even against, and it's a, the Astros, hit his ERA coming into this game, he's five in, He's got five wins on the year, 4.45 ERA, 9.53 K per nine. His price is still up there because it's Max Scherzer. He is not living up to his Mets salary um, at all. And I can't trust him. Now, is he capable of throwing a no-hitter? Yeah, he's capable of throwing a no-hitter. The chances of it, very light. Um, at Houston, against Houston, I, I got to go against him. I, I can't trust him. He might have a good game. You guys might take him. Um, I cannot trust Max Scherzer right now. He hasn't showed me any trust lately. Um, so I'm probably avoiding him. I would look at the Astros bats if I can. If we look at the Astros bats that have had success in the past, Jose Abreu, 6-for-20 with a double. Jose Altuve, 4-for-20. Now, Altuve had a really good Saturday in the blowout loss, and then they sat him on Sunday, so I fully expect him to be back for this game. It's something to monitor, though. I don't think he's hurt. I think it was just a day of rest. Maldonado's 1-for-7 with a home run. I wouldn't use him. Bregman, 0-for-5. He's looked terrible all year. Kyle Tucker, I might use 1-for-2. Chaz McCormick, 0-for-1. Um... Yeah, just depending. If Mauricio Dubon is in there, he's a very cheap option. Uh, Altuve, I like him. Abreu, I like him if he's in there. I do like Kyle Tucker. So, yeah, I'm probably stacking against Max Scherzer in this one. I'll have some Hunter Browns never faced the Mets before. The Mets have looked terrible almost all year, and he's looked good when we've used him. So I'll have some exposure to Hunter Brown and the Astros bats. It's kind of crazy. Uh, Rangers at the White Sox, we don't know who's pitching for either team. Um, once it's announced, that will obviously help me figure out what we'll like. This, so these are what I kind of talk about. So we have these videos to help you. If you do need that little bit of boost, we do. You know, we offer the BVPs on the website. We at fantasyteamadvisors.com. We have cheat sheets that have stacks. So if there's like a pitcher that either one of these teams has been really good against in the past, and it's a stack, it's going to be on our cheat sheet. Ten dollars a month, you really can't lose. Um, and that's kind of what we're looking at. So I will be looking at uh, when these num names come out. That'll help us kind of form if we want to stack either team. I mean, most of the time we're going to want to stack the Rangers just depending on who it's against. So that's my thought on this one. We'll have to kind of wait for this. Arizona at the Brewers. you got Merrill Kelly versus Corbin Burns. Kelly, 101 plate appearances, 237 batting average, striking out right about 20% of those batters. Corbin Burns, 75 plate appearances, 153 batting average, striking out 37.3% of those batters. I kind of like both of these pitchers. This is what's weird. I like both of these pitchers, but I also like the Diamondbacks' offense um, all year. Um, the batters that have had success against Merrill Kelly, Willie Adamas, 6 for 14 with two home runs, so a cheaper option there. Tapia, if he's in there, 7 for 15 with a double. Luis Urias is only 2 for 12. Uh, Brian Anderson, 2-for-8 with a home run. Victor Caratini, 2-for-7 with a double. Uh, Jesse Winker, 1-for-3 with a triple. Other than that, I mean, Willie Adamas and Tapia really, and Urias are really the only ones that scare me right now. Um, on the flip side of that, Corbin Burns, he's a stud. He's pitched kind of bad this 
year collectively, but he's got good numbers here. 28 strikeouts and 75 at-bats against this team. That's kind of good. No one's, or I guess Evan Longoria is the only one that's hit a home run, and Gurriel Jr. is the only one who's had an extra base hit. I honestly think this could be a low-scoring game. I think I kind of like both of these pitchers. Um, if I were playing cash and tournament, I think Corbin Burns would be your cash option. I think Merrill Kelly, well, other way around. I think Merrill Kelly would be your cash and Burns would be your tournament just because we know how good the Diamondbacks are this year. Scares me a little bit, but they have been blanked before this year. So I'm on the fence for both of these. I like both of these pitchers. I will have exposure to both pitchers. I will have exposure to some batters in some of these offenses. It just depends on what it comes down to. It'll depend on the lineups that come out to help kind of figure out if we want the top half of the lineup or the bottom half of the lineup. Then the final game on the slate, the Padres at the Giants. You got Michael Walker versus to be announced with the Giants. It is in San Francisco, so I do like that. Um, so like I said last week, I actually know. So Keaton Wynn, who got called up, Last week, he made his Major League debut, uh, pitched four innings, and got the save in his debut, which has never happened before. I know the fa- his family. They live about 20 minutes from us, which is crazy. Um, he, uh, Alex Cobb just got put on the IL, I think, either late Saturday night or early Sunday, um, and Keaton got called up, and he is technically a starter in the minors. I don't know if they spot start him here, um, which would be cool because I know him, um, but... I would, I kind of think, I have a feeling it might be something like that or might be a bullpen game. Um, it is San Francisco, so it is a pitcher's park. And we look at Michael Walker, 46 plate appearances against the Giants, 21.7 K percentage, a 429 batting average. Let's see if, you know, that's a couple batters or it's a, collectively as a whole. Jock Peterson's 5 for 17 with two doubles, a triple, and a home run. I like him. Conforto, 3 for 9 with a double. Brandon Crawford, 7 for 12 with four doubles and a triple. He's got a zero ERA for his career, I believe, at least this year anyway. J.D. Davis, 3 for 3 with a double and a home run. Um, so, yeah, I honestly would like to stack the Giants, just depending on what's, who's out there. I think Jock, Conforto, J.D. Davis, and Brandon Crawford are all good ones. Tyro Estrada um, is 0 for 1, but he is a, a good option as well. So there's a lot to like. I'm going to avoid completely avoid Michael Walker, and I would look at uh, – looking at the Giants bats and then let's see what pitcher comes out here if it's Keaton Wynn I'll have some exposure to him because I know his family um has nothing to do with DFS or money it's just that would be awesome to say but yeah um that's kind of where I'm at in this one um again the Padres bats are they're good so we'll wait to see who comes out here and then we can look if there's any history between the two teams um the pitcher versus the Padres bats so there you go a shorter shorter video here with uh you know not all the pictures on the slate but hopefully a good breakdown for you if you enjoyed it if you liked it if it helped you hit the like button hit the subscribe button help us out um hit the bell notification so you know when we either go live or we post videos and we are starting to put out like home run picks and stuff like that and uh hits uh predictions and stuff on youtube shorts so those are get put out right it's usually around lunchtime but it just depends and then we also have a tiktok page everything is in the description of the video so go check that out and go check out the article um those will have some of the bats as well that we like so thanks for checking the video out hopefully you have success if you do have success or you've used us and had success let us know down below um if you want to try to win a free week of mlb dfs content like the video, be a subscriber, and tell me who's going to hit home run, what inning they're going to hit it in, and the distance traveled. Just a fun little home run contest that we have. FanDuel used to have it, and they got rid of it for whatever reason, so I thought I'd bring it to this channel. So good luck. We will be back tomorrow. Let's bring home some bacon. Peace.